come in. Welcome. Welcome to Mystery Theater. The purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experience. So said Eleanor Roosevelt. Most of us agree, and yet few of us really put the thought into practice. We're constantly being held back, not just by fear, but by habit. Sometimes we need an accident or a brush with mortality to jolt us loose from the routines of life. We've lost an engine, and, and all our ma magnetic instrumentation is on the fritz. Please keep calm. There goes the other one. Mayday! 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 This is November 463 Tango Charlie at Cessna. The patient Mustang declaring an emergency due to loss of both engines. Approximately 5 nautical miles north of Canton Island airstrip at an altitude of 4,000 feet. We'll attempt to glide in, requesting immediate assistance in case we don't make it. I'd like to hit anything on any frequency. Damn interference! I don't think we're getting through at all. Hey, you left the intercom on! Please remain seated and brace yourself by placing your feet flat on the floor and leaning forward, holding the pillow in your lap. Remind yourself where the emergency exit is. And remember I showed you the life raft in the rear of the cabin. Please remain calm. I am calm. It'd be funny if I died this way. What? Our mystery drama, The Circle of Life, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Paul Muir, and stars Virginia Hargrove. I shall return shortly with Act One. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. The year is 2220. The place is the asteroid 253 Matilda. Wow. There's something going on here, that's for sure. There's a big spike around 8 gigahertz. Get the emergency cut off! If they could see us, it looked like we're walking around in slow motion now. Time is passing at different rates, here versus there. 30 seconds to gravitational reversal. Engine 17 didn't light. 19 is running at 90%. Not good enough. That happens at impact and I'm dead. Seems a bit harsh blowing up a planet, don't you think? I've presided over a lot of departures from our world, but you're the first who's leaving it alive. Never imagined anything like that. Our, our technology, technology has, has been, been developing, developing for 10,000 years, longer than yours. Here they come! Here they come. What's over? Gotcha! Planet Earth calling. Oh, damn. Quiet. You're 82 years old. Face it, this is a one-way mission. A suicide mission even if everything goes to plan. You know, you're as crazy as Salish. He had no business flying that ship at his age and look at where it's got him. I envy him. You're jealous that my husband is dying out there all alone? Not of the dying part, but of getting to take those risks. Time has elapsed. 253 Matilda. Listen to the complete season two now at quietpleaseorg 253 and all major podcasting services. Our story tonight takes place back around the turn of the century, the year 2000. For many people, especially young people, it was an exciting time of fast-moving progress. The protagonist of our story tonight is having a rather different experience, a tedious, repetitive, mind-numbing slide into the middle part of her life, 
Into that long period after the vigor of youth has fled, but before the wisdom and perspective of old age arrives. Suppose there's no way out but through. Good morning, Emma. Morning, dear. Pancakes again? You want some? I always do. You're welcome. Did you pay the water bill yet? I thought you were going to. No, I haven't had a chance. I don't understand why we can't keep up with these things that are exactly the same every month. I have a lot on my plate right now. Yeah, a lot of pancakes. Maybe you should cut back. I see the laundry isn't done either. Oh, and that's my fault? I know my hours are shorter and I'm making half of what you make but I work for a living, too. I'm sorry, Sharon. I I shouldn't have said that. I'm just feeling so frustrated lately. Feels like we're stuck in a circle of work and chores, and there's no escape. Exactly. Every day the same. Every day we fall a little further behind, and there's nothing to look forward to. But that's just life as responsible, mature adults. Maybe we should get away from it all. You know, travel, throw a dart at a man. You know we can't afford that. It'd be hectic to plan, and when we got back, we'd just be way further behind. There's gotta be something we can do. It's past eight. You'd better finish your breakfast quick so you can catch your train. Hey there, I like your blouse. You talking to me? Yeah, we've been sharing our morning commute for years. And, you know, we've never talked before. Funny how that is, isn't it? How you can see someone every day and never bother to learn the first thing about them. If you say so. So, what do you do for a living? You must work downtown too. Ugh, look, I just want to read my book in peace. Oh, sorry. Sir, sir, I've seen you here a lot, too. I have a policy of not talking to strangers. But I'm not a stranger. You see me all the time. I'd like you to be a stranger. Ma'am, please don't disturb the other passengers, or I'll have to ask you to leave. But I just... Oh, all right. Good morning, Miss Harris. Is it? Is it really, Pat? What? What do you mean, Miss Harris? Forget it. Just sign me in. Hey, Emma. You look half dead this morning. Thanks. Tough night? Tough morning already. I I don't know, John. I just feel like I'm stuck in this rut, going in circles. I I need a big change in my life, but I don't know what, and I wouldn't have the nerve to follow through anyway. Hello, this is Emma Harris speaking. Miss Harris, this is Dr. Patel. Oh, good. You've got the test results. Yes. You know, I'm sorry to waste your time. I knew it was nothing, but my partner insisted I get it checked out. Uh, Emma? Emma? What is it? There's no easy way to say this, so I better just say it. You've got pancreatic cancer. What? Well, what does that mean? What's the treatment? I'm not recommending any treatment. What? Why? 
if this were the typical pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, then we'd try surgery and chemotherapy, but this is diffuse mitochondrial carcinoma. It, it spread too far to cut it out, and we don't have any drugs that can target it. I, I'm sorry. How long? A year, if you're lucky. You'll probably feel okay for the next six months. After that, serious symptoms will start to manifest. We can offer you palliative care. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll need some time to digest this. Feel free to give me a call or come by the clinic to talk about it. I can also refer you to a good end-of-life therapist. Thanks. Goodbye. What was that call? It sounded intense. Oh, no, nothing important, really. Are you sure? It was, um, it, it was the auto shop, you know, troubles with the car. But you don't drive. Sharon's car. But why Accounting team, report to meeting room B immediately. All the subtlety of a cattle prod. <laughs> hey, this might be that something different you were looking for. Right. An exciting accounting emergency. Well, no sense in trying to put it off. All right, looks like everyone's here. Let's bring this meeting to order. So what's the emergency, boss? Did our whole company just go bust? You all know we recently completed our acquisition of Phoenix Canton Industries. Martinez, fill them in very briefly on what you found. Well, sir, it's more of a matter of what I didn't find. Most of the company makes sense, won't bore everyone with that, but they've got an installation on Canton Island that's in Kiribati. Scientific research station, they say. It's sucking up 84 million a year with only six employees. And I don't understand their equipment orders. Satellite dishes, massive electrical infrastructure, an insane amount of copper, and a constant flow of replacements for failing equipment. And I mean a failure rate beyond all reason. What kind of scientific research is it? See, I've been having trouble understanding that. It's something about harmonic oscillations and feedback. It involves tides, but don't ask me what any of that means. I spoke to their director, Dr. Lee, on the phone, and I felt like he was trying to hide something behind a lot of confusing words. And we're not in the business of funding expensive research unless it has potentially profitable applications. I need a volunteer to head out there to investigate this properly in person right away. Talk to everybody, tour the facilities, find out if their costs are justified what they're doing with all that equipment, and make a determination of if there's commercial potential or if we'd be better off shuttering the place. Right away? Tomorrow. Martinez can't go, unfortunately, so I need somebody else. For how long? Could be a week, could be a month, maybe even longer if there's complexities that need our oversight. It takes as long as it takes. The company can pay for your family to come along too. Come on, people. This is a free vacation to a tropical paradise in the South Pacific. Don't make me draft someone. I'll do it. Really, Harris? That's so completely unlike you. I'm ready for a change. Well, that's the spirit, Harris. I've booked a flight to Honolulu tomorrow morning that'll connect to your charter. All you have to do is be at the airport. And my partner, Sharon? Well, your special friend isn't really family. I don't think our shareholders would want me to subsidize your lifestyle. I won't go unless she's included. Come on, boss. You're getting off cheap. If I were going, I'd have you pay for my three kids, wife, and mother-in-law. Trapped with them all on a tiny island would be like a punishment for you, wouldn't it, John? <laughs> Which is why I'm not going. Now, how about it? Oh, fine. Emma, you've got your plus one. 
Meeting adjourned. Emma, shouldn't you have checked with Sharon first? I'm sure she'll be excited to go. And if not, to hell with her. I need this. <laughs> wow. Well, at least you don't have kids to worry about. Honey, I'm home. There you are, finally. Come help me with the dishes. Did you hear back from Dr. Patel? He called this morning. So what did he say? He said, um, he, he said he, he couldn't get the results yet. Um, Delays at the laboratory. They'll have it for me next week. Oh. But Sharon, something exciting came up at work. They're sending me to Kitty Boss. We leave tomorrow morning. What? You're leaving tomorrow? For how long? It'll at least be a week, maybe a month or more. It all depends. Can't you get out of it? I volunteered. You didn't even discuss it with me first? But, uh, it's a, it's a chance to break out of this horrible routine. You're coming too, of course. I made them agree to pay your way. Come with you? Are you kidding me? I have a job, friends, a life here. And who do you expect to look after stripes? I can't just drop everything and follow you halfway around the world on your midlife crisis. Your work is always flexible. It let you have the time off. Would we even be able to live openly there? Did you investigate the island's culture at all? Well, we could pretend to be, you know, friends or sisters or something. It's not like people accept us here either. It's an opportunity. An opportunity for you, maybe. What about me? What about our life here? You didn't even consider how this affects me. I didn't mean to upset you. I thought you'd be as excited as I was about a chance to break out of our rut. Will you call your boss now and explain you've changed your mind? No, I want to go. I need to go. Then there's nothing more to talk about. Go on your crazy adventure, but if you're not back here in a few weeks, don't expect me to be waiting for you. I don't know how long it'll take. I'll, I'll keep in touch. Don't. Just don't. I don't want to hear from you unless you're telling me you're on your way home. Our Emma Harris is fighting a war on three fronts now. Her terminal illness, her partner, and herself. She can't seem to bring herself to tell anyone in her life about the cancer. At least not yet. And we can't be sure why. Perhaps speaking it aloud would make it real and final for her. Perhaps she has unfinished business in her life she wants to take care of first. Maybe she's worried about how differently people will behave around her once they know. But we've already seen something of how differently Emma behaves herself since the fateful news. She's made an uncharacteristic decision to take on a project on the other side of the world, and she's sticking to that decision no matter what her partner says. Could this trip to the tiny Pacific island of Canton, this leap of faith into the unknown, be exactly what she needs to escape her stagnation and live a little before she dies? Or could it destroy her faster than the cancer? We'll find out what awaits her on the mysterious island when we return shortly with Act 2. I was 13. I herded lambs beyond the village on the lee. The magic of the sun, perhaps, or what was it, affected me. I felt with joy all overcome, as though with God. Rover operator Ilya Zakharov, authorization number 00461 of the Lunar Agricultural Expedition Program. The time for lunch had long passed by, and still among the weeds I lay, 
and prayed to God, I know not why. It was so pleasant then to pray. Phantom Nine, initialize. But not for long the sun stayed kind. Not long in bliss I prayed. Phantom Nine initialized. It turned into a ball of fire and set the world ablaze. As though just wakened up I gaze the hamlet's drab and poor. And God's blue heavens, even they, are glorious no more. Denouncer Media comes a brand new experience in audio horror, Red Odyssey, starring Alison Cossett, Peter Wicks, Sarah Golding, Erica Sanderson, James Scully, Peter Wyshynski, and Brandon Levine. Red Odyssey, a Lovecraftian horror story you will never forget. Coming September 8th, wherever you get your podcasts. Quietplease.org presents... 100 Second Theater. By the gods! What is it? An anthology series of bite-sized audio dramas. I managed to induce cascading multiple personality disorder. Each 100 seconds in lengths. This box has been defying treasure seekers like us for 6,000 years since the ancient Sumerians buried it under this temple. And your desk? Has it always been made of chocolate? I don't really remember specifically what it was made of. Available at quietplease.org slash 100. Do you remember your first plane flight? You were probably young. Maybe you were afraid to look out the window, afraid the plane might crash. Emma Harris is making the first flight of her life at age 43. She's completed the first leg successfully, a commercial flight to Honolulu, where she transferred to a small charter on which she's now the only passenger as it approaches tiny Canton Island. If you were to suggest to her that the plane might crash, she'd smile at the irony of worrying about an improbable danger, even as certain death grows inexorably in her pancreas. Have you finished your meal, Miss Harris? Yes, thank you. Uh, how long until we land? Not long. You can actually see the island out your window now. Where? There. Uh, I see now. Those circular shapes in the ocean where the water changes color, those are odd. Any idea what causes them? I wouldn't know, ma'am. This is your captain speaking. We're about to make our landing approach, so please fasten your seatbelts now. Are you okay, miss? I th think Apologies so. Apologies for that unexpected turbulence. Getting some odd electromagnetic readings. Does that happen often? Not usually, but it's not my first time. It's going to be a bit of a mess for me to clean up once we land. The island, uh, as we get closer, it kind of looks like the atmosphere is glowing. Like the northern lights. But we're in the tropics, and it's not dark yet. Does it always look like that? Ma'am, we've never flown here before, but this is a special charter. Have a look. You should be able to see it without unbuckling never seen anything quite like that. My guess would be a big mass of bioluminescent plankton. Sometimes that can appear to project up into the air, like an optical illusion. I'll have to ask them when we land. We've lost an engine, and, and all our ma magnetic instrumentation is on the fritz. Please, keep calm. There goes the other one. Mayday! 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 This is November 463 Tango Charlie and Cessna. The station Mustang declaring an emergency due to loss of both engines. Approximately five nautical miles north of Canton Island airstrip at an altitude of 4,000 feet. We'll attempt to glide in, requesting immediate assistance in case we don't make it. I'm not getting anything on any frequency. Damn interference. I don't think we're getting through at all. Hey, you left the intercom on. 
Please remain seated and brace yourself by placing your feet flat on the floor and leaning forward, holding the pillow in your lap. Remind yourself where the emergency exit is. And remember I showed you the life raft in the rear of the cabin. Please remain calm. I am calm. It'd be funny if I died this way. What? Brace for impact. Harris, are you right? I think so. Where are we? It looks like we crashed on the beach just short of the runway. Let's get you out of here. Welcome to Canton Island, Miss Harris. I'm Dr. Lee, the research director here. This is my colleague, Dr. Singer. We're sorry to see you had plane trouble, but we've got your living quarters all prepared for you if you'd like to follow us. Thanks, I could use a quiet room to rest a bit after the latest brush with my mortality. On the flight in, I was noticing circular patterns in the sea around the island and a sort of green glow above it. Can you explain? Both are side effects of the research we're doing, but perfectly safe, I assure you. How can your research discolor the ocean like that without polluting it? Circular polarization is a natural effect of the rotating magnetic fields we use. It's not chemical. Uh, okay. I don't think Miss Harris understood a word you said, Dr. Singer. So, uh, could you try to summarize the nature of your research in layman's terms? Making the complex sound simple was a tall order. Do you have any background in physics? I took a general education physics class at university a quarter century ago, but I don't remember much. Are you familiar with any sciences at all? No, I'm an accountant. <sighs> The hallway has been sloping down. Are we going underground? You'll see in a moment. I am... Wow. Incredible. Not underground, but under sea. We thought we'd give you a room with a view. It's amazing. Totally transparent walls and ceilings. We must be 20 feet underwater. Eight meters. You know, as an accountant, I have to admonish you for this. But as a human being, I have to admire it. Building an undersea extension with visibility was actually quite necessary for our experiments. But we'll get into those details tomorrow. For now, we'll let you rest. What's going on? Miss Harris, please go back into your room. But I'm here to learn about your operations. There's an emergency in progress. We're trying to get things under control. Show me. I don't really have time for a tour right now. But I suppose you can tag along behind me if you insist. I do. Report! The energy is still building up. Why didn't the auto shut work? Don't know. This isn't the time to find out. We have to release the energy. Then we can shut the system down. Shut it down? Just temporarily. Still. What do you think, Dr. Singer? It wouldn't delay us too much, and it'd be a good test of omnidirectional operation. 
I know targeted is the plan, but there could be applications for omnidirectional. But what would the wave height be? If we release now, my simulation shows just 20 centimeters around most of the Pacific Rim. It's more than enough to draw attention to us. They wouldn't be able to trace us exactly. Remember, we took care of that issue. Is there any other option? If we wait any longer, it blows up and we all die. Okay. Do it. I gather you just released a tremendous amount of energy into the ocean. Is that safe? Aren't you worried about killing fish? <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, she's worried about killing fish. Fish! Should we tell her? Might as well. She's seen too much. If she reported back and told an expert what she saw, they'd figure it out. Figure what out? That energy we released, it's going to create a small tsunami around most of the Pacific Rim. Small because it's an omnidirectional release. So, if you directed it at one spot? A large tsunami. How large? Catastrophically. Anywhere we want it. But why would you want? Miss Harris, did you know that two-thirds of the world's population is along the coastlines? This is the ultimate power, for good or for evil. The ability to wipe out enemy cities with what looks like a natural disaster and can't be traced to the country of origin. That's what my company bought? Technically, your company owns us, but you'll excuse me if I feel that I'm the one in the position of power at the moment. This is too important to hand over to accountants. Shouldn't it go to the military? You trust the United States military with this kind of power? I want it to be used for good, not evil. Then who? Us, of course. You! We're scientists. We don't thirst for power. We only want to help the world. How can a weapon like this possibly help the world? We'll only use it to make them listen. Miss Harris, did you know this island will be underwater in 40 years? Just one of the countless losses to climate change we're facing in this new century, and governments aren't doing anything about it. But they will, once we give them an ultimatum and a demonstration. You're mad. Utterly mad. Doing nothing in the face of the greatest worldwide ecological disaster mankind has ever known would be madness. Don't bother, Miss Harris. You'll never get through our jamming. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. So I take it I'm your prisoner. We won't restrain you, Miss Harris. You can go anywhere on Canton Island you like. Because there's nowhere I can go without a functional plane, that's what you mean? Precisely. There are no boats, and the nearest populated island is 500 kilometers, so I wouldn't advise you to swim for it. People will come. Your plane crash was no accident, and we jammed the SOS. Oh, eventually someone will get through, but by then we'll be somewhere else. Your job is done. You found out where the money's going. Now go up to the beach and enjoy yourself. Things have gone from bad to worse for Emma Harris. Terminally ill, relationship in a rough patch, plane crash survivor, and now effectively prisoner on a tiny atoll which hosts a weapon such as the world has never seen. What can one person do against all this? We'll find out when we return shortly with Act 3. Quiet Please Originals, a new series of original audio dramas in the style of Willis Cooper's Quiet Please. 
I'm just the man from 1985 who built the world's first time machine and took it 37 years into the future. Nothing interesting there. Do you remember the little house in the edge of Mount Wilson? The house that had nothing inside it? There's something elemental about it. Primal. The raw power of nature over technology. It strips us back to our roots. I wonder if any of us could know everything. If only we could be as supremely arrogant as you, Mr. Afternoon. I don't know. Huh. Available at quietplease.org slash originals. You see, looking up from the ground, blood red clouds boiling across the sky. You did ask me to bring the thunder. <laughs> Agent! Agent! Uh, help! I've got the chalice, please! Well, if they're following you, then I guess that takes care of a loose end for me. <laughs> All of you feel the earth beneath you shake and crack and break. I feel that I have failed both of you, and I am sorry for that. This has nothing to do with you being a bad leader. Do you want a countdown? Oh, I think I want a countdown. I wanted Three, to help. I always had good two, intention. I one. did not deserve to die. Now. The Lucky Die Podcast is a weekly 5e Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast. Join our adventure every Monday, wherever you download podcasts, by searching for The Lucky Die. There are points in each of our lives where we're tested, and where we find out what we're made of. The tests can take many forms. Sometimes an action is demanded of us, and we must refuse. Other times outside forces demand our inaction, and we have to find the courage to act anyway. In these moments of pressure and stress, wouldn't it be nice if we could take a time out to just lie back in the sand on a tropical beach for the afternoon? That's exactly what Emma Harris is doing, but the weight of her challenges may be so immense that even a beach as beautiful as this one can't help. Excuse me, Miss Harris? I remember you. You work for Phoenix Canton. Everyone on the island works here. Doesn't mean I like what we do. Name's Baxter. Max Baxter. Do you mind if I sit down and join you, Miss Harris? My job here seems to be done, so you can just call me out and do as you like. You're not the typical sort of person who comes to us. What's your typical visitor like? Young men trying to travel the world in pursuit of adventure, hoping to find themselves in the process. If that's what you were when you arrived, that must have been a hell of a long time ago. I'm not a typical case either. I came here as a retreat to escape my former life. I guess I was just looking for a change. A chance to make a real choice for once and take my life off the safety rails. Have you traveled much before? Never. Have never been on a plane. What changed? I'm dying. Dying? Cancer. Maybe a year left. Sorry to hear that. And you weren't happy with your life? Miserable. But I hadn't had the courage to fully admit that to myself before. Don't you see what you've gained? You can do anything you want now. I can? Fear doesn't have to hold you back anymore the way it always did. The way it does for most people. Because you already know your expiration date. I'm not a food product and I don't appreciate... What was that? Oh, they're burning off the day's oxygen waste buildup. Is the oxygen what causes the green glow I saw? Yes. The whole world is in danger from these maniacs, and all I can do is sit here on the beach waiting to die. What are you afraid of? Excuse me? Do you think they'll kill you if you try to stop them? Probably. Why fear that if you're going to die anyway? 
Well... You're free. That's why you came out here. Because you no longer have to worry about the consequences your actions have on your future. I suppose. I can tell you how to set the controls to cause another overload like this morning's that'll destroy the whole place. And I can get you a gun. But the explosion would kill everyone, wouldn't it? Pull the evacuation alarm. There's a storm shelter on the far side of the island, built below ground with a sturdy lid. I think we'd all be safe there. You'd have to be the last in, but you can make it. You really think this could work? Then why haven't you done it yourself? I'm afraid. I can't do it, but I believe you can do it. Meet me here tonight. Once most of them are asleep, it'll be easier. Here's the gun I promised. I'm not sure I should take it. I don't want to kill anyone. Maybe the threat of it will mean you don't have to. So we just have to get to the control room? Not we. You. You're not coming? I'm sorry. I I thought I'd made that clear. I I, I don't have that kind of nerve. When you get right down to it, I'm a coward. Or maybe you just have more left to live for. Here's my ID card. It'll open the doors for you. I wrote down the overload instructions. Where will you be? In the storm shelter. Remember, you'll only have five minutes after you start the overload to get in there with the rest of us. Right. Well, thanks for the help. See you soon, hopefully. But if this goes wrong, I hope you'll understand. I'm going to say you stole my ID and gun. Right. Okay. Evacuation alarm. To the storm shelter. You'll be safe there. Now set the overload. Stop! What do you think you're doing? Canceling your project directorly. You're causing an overload? Intentionally? That's right. You have less than five minutes to get to the shelter if you want to live. I'm not going anywhere. There's still time to fix what you've done. Move. Or I'll shoot. I'm unarmed. You're an accountant, not a killer. I'm not sure what I am anymore. You'd never be able to live with yourself if you took a life. You're not a monster. But you are. Why? Because I dare to stand up and fight for our planet? For our future? Nobody should have that kind of power. This is your last chance. Put down the gun. There is still time for me to release the energy before overload, and we'll both live long and happy lives. You you shot my ankles! I'm sorry, I don't have time to carry you out of here before the explosion. You can't leave me! This is murder! Good luck, Director! Gideon! Everyone's accounted for except Director Lee. He couldn't make it. Let's close it up. How long until it blows? Now. Now.
What are you going to do now? There's no more work here, so I suppose I'll have to go back and face what I ran away from. And you? The same, I suppose. How do you feel? Different. Oh? Younger. More alive. Hmm. I'm ready to go home. They say you can never go home again, because it'll have changed while you were away. But sometimes home can be perfectly static, but will feel totally different because you yourself have been changed by your time away. What awaits Emma when she returns, and how will what she's done change her? I'll return in a moment with some final thoughts. In a world filled with hidden secrets and unanswered questions. Watson, something intriguing has come our way. What's it all about, Holmes? Two souls separated by time and circumstance. He just vanished without a trace. Unimaginable riches. The Agra treasure. The stuff of legends. But concealed within the shadows lies a hidden truth. A complex web of alliances and deception. No one need know that you have killed him. Let us hide him away and who is the wiser? Prepare to embark on a journey of obsession, redemption, and retribution. The truth will be revealed. Uncover the enigma that is the sign of the four. Holmes, we mustn't waste any time. Will they solve the mystery? Or will the criminal slip through their fingers? Available now wherever you listen to podcasts. Brought to you by the Willow Haven Catalog. The sign of the four. Will you join us? Hello, Aria. Did you want to listen in on me and Rock enjoying ourselves? Don't encourage him. Should I describe to you what we're doing Um, right now? Picasso? (laughs) What's going on? Let's see. Look, these wind shells document anything you do in order to banish the spirits. I don't banish spirits. I'm fixing the tango. Of course, we can't open a new hole into the Aetherweb every year. But spirits aren't always... Bad. Are Those they? are exactly the reason Tangleweeds happened in the first Akasar, place. I'm sure Rocka knows how to get through a water gate without disrupting the magic bounce. So, what happens when there's a hole in the weave? Does magic <laughs> pour out? <laughs> it is already broken! Let more of air into this world! Help destroy Wait, no, every single no. one of them! You've fed enough already! I will kill you, you filthy! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down, Rocka! Crack it, Feather Duster! God, ferocious Rune Master! Your friction will grind the weave away! <sighs> Yarta. In moments like these, I wish I could see the rooms. What's wrong, Raka? Is that tangle weave maybe too difficult even for someone as great as you? Counterbalance, a high fantasy audio drama. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get podcasts from. Did Emma Harris resume the boring routine of her former life when she returned home? Whatever the final year of Emma's life may have had in store for her, you can be sure that she faced it with a newfound conscious awareness of her choices. As for the weapon, we can only hope it couldn't be rebuilt without Director Lee. Or is it possible we need someone like Director Lee to save us from ourselves? The Circle of Life was written by Paul Neerum. Our cast included Virginia Hargrove, Lindsay White, David Loftus, Jim Cogan, Roger Arnold, Ahmad A.J. Jude, James Lorenz, Megan Schmidt, Allison Prophet, Gwyneth Knight, Marianne Stanick, David Nagel, Alexander Grace, Nick Fury, Risper Shorts, Lindsay Townsend, and Paul Neerum. The entire production was under the direction of Paul Nero. This is Aaron Bentich inviting you to return for another adventure in the macabre. 
Until next time, pleasant dreams.